Hello and welcome to my Scratch mini guide series. This is episode uh, 12. Does that does that look right? Uh, I've run out of fingers, so I'm just having to try and try and work this out. Episode 12. Um, this is <laughs> this is mini guide episode 12. And um, what I want to talk to you today about is how we can control multiple copies of the same sprite with just a little bit of code. So let's jump right into it. I'm picking up where we left off with. Uh, the code from last time, from the last video. If you haven't watched that video, go back and watch it so that you're familiar with what I'm doing right now. Now, what I've got here is five clones, okay? These five are all clones, and I've got my original sprite here. Now, what I want to do is start thinking about my original sprite as a cookie cutter, okay? And I cut out all the cookies with it, and then I put the cookie cutter to one side, and I'm just interested in the cookies. Now. What am I talking about? Well, what I want to do is I just want to use my sprite to create clones, and then I want to tell the clones how they should behave. I don't want my original sprite to be uh, moving around and part of my game once it's created all the clones. And that's simply because it makes our lives a lot simpler. We don't have to duplicate code, and it makes it a lot easier. So, what do I mean by this? Well, you can see here at this end that I'm getting uh, my actual original sprite to glide one second to a round position. So if I hit play, he makes all these clones and then he moves away. Okay, that's just, just affecting my original. But what I want to do actually is I want to tell my original just to hide. So he's going to hide. And so we're going to make five clones and then he's going to disappear. Okay, And you can see there that he always makes five clones and disappears every time I hit the green flag. Now what we're going to do in fact, let's make another block. <laughs> That's exciting. Okay, so let's, <laughs> no, it's not that exciting, is it? Let's make a new block and let's call it create clones. And uh, let's press okay. And then we're gonna define create clones. We're going to do this, okay? And I'm gonna grab the hide off of that. I'm gonna say create clones and then hide. So that is what our cat is going to do. Now you'll see that I've got this setup block hidden over here. I'll put my define clones over here, create clones doesn't get much simpler than this. This is the way to program. This is so, so nice. When the green flag clicks, what do I do? I set up, I create some clones, and then I hide. Wow, that's easy to read. That's that's awesome. Well done. Great job. Okay, so um, now we need to get these clones moving. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to go into control. And in control at the bottom is this block here, when I start as a clone. And what this will do is it will tell all of the clones how they should behave. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to see if I can maybe get them all bouncing up and down. I think that would be uh, at least highlight what we're what we're kind of going for here. So let's uh, let's just put in some very basic code. I'm I'm starting to think about how I can make this kind of look amazing, but let's uh, let's not go let's not get too carried away. So I'm going to move ten steps, and if I'm touching, I'm going to turn, and I'm going to point in a certain direction. Okay, cool. So when I start as a clone, I'm going to point downwards. Okay, and I'm going to forever move ten steps, and if, just like I've done in all my other videos, if I touch the edge, I'm going to turn 180 degrees. So if touching edge, change that to touching edge, I'm going to turn 180 degrees. So now. If I hit play, you can see there I've written one bit of code, but it's affecting all five clones. Okay, you can see they're all moving up and down in sequence. My original, if I like, kind of click on this, you can see that it's hidden up there in the top. Okay, that box is being drawn around it. That is where it is being hidden. Okay, it is just off the screen. It's just chilling there. We have five clones that are just following this code, and this is really, really powerful. And let me show you how it can be powerful. So instead of just doing this, let's make our create clones a little bit more interesting. And instead of doing all of this, let's, uh, I don't know if my laptop is going to like this, but let's do turn uh, two degrees. Let's have them right at the start, wait just a little bit of time. So there's a little bit of delay between each one. And let's have them, uh, let's change their 
rotation style so they can spin all the way around. So uh, all around, lovely. Uh, point and direction, 180, we're not gonna use that anymore. We're gonna wait just a little bit of time just so that they're not all doing it exactly the same time so there's a little bit of difference and we're just gonna get them to turn. So now let's just do this and you can see there that they are all turning. Uh, maybe I'll just increase the delay a little bit just so that, actually I don't wanna increase it here, I wanna increase it when I make them. So forever turn two degrees and then let's come over here to create clones and then after we move, every time after we move, I'm just gonna wait a little bit of time just so that they're not so in sync and it's not so odd. So let's do that. And there you go, so they're a little bit out of sync. Let's try uh, maybe 0.3. Okay, cool, so you can see that they're uh, moving at different speeds now, um, which is quite cool. So I have like a lot of control over how I'm starting these clones and getting them out. But as I say, the real power is here. So instead of doing five, let's do eight. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna whack a repeat 10 around this. Now, what on earth am I doing? Well, I'm going to uh, go to X minus 192 there. So I'm gonna go back to the start. So I'm going to, once I've come to the end after eight times, I'm gonna set my X back to minus 192. And then I'm gonna change my Y by, let's say 30 and I'll maybe repeat this four times. Okay, what's this gonna do? Well, I'm hopefully gonna create four rows of clones now. Let's see it in action. Okay, I have changed Y by the wrong amount. I need to do minus 30. Let's uh, stop this chaos here and start again. So here we go, we are making our sprites and then we are making new rows. Now 30 isn't quite enough, but you're getting the idea that I can make a lot of sprites. I can put a lot of sprites on the screen and I have not put a lot of code on the screen at all. In fact, the code that's running the sprites is here, it's three blocks. That's what's making all of these clones move. The, the thing that's creating these clones, yeah, it's a little bit complex. I'm repeating something four times. I'm repeating this bit of code eight times, okay? And then I'm just kind of returning to the start and dropping down a little bit. In fact, I need to drop down a bit further. So let's do minus 60. Uh, repeat four, that should be fine. Let's have a look at that. So there's a line of sprites, there's a line of sprites, and you can see them all doing the code. Madness, utter madness. And you can see right at the end there, our sprite disappeared and it is just hidden. And now we've got all the clones doing whatever we've told them to do. And this is really, really powerful. If, you're, if you have a game where there's more than one of a thing, it's much easier to make clones and tell them all how to behave rather than having to program each individual sprite. And every time you make a little change, having to go back and change each individual sprite. If I want to make a change to this, how many have we got? Four times eight, that's whoa, 32, 32. If I wanted to make a change to how all 32 of these uh, sprites behave, all I need to do is come over here to when I start as a clone and let's do something slightly interesting. Let's uh, do, 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 do. let's change color effect by 25. Whoa, look, and all of them are doing it. I just dragged that block in and all of them are doing it. Let's just do it to one. And now we get this kind of cool, like uh, fading effect, which is really nice. Uh, rather than color, I could maybe do fish eye. I'm not sure. Oh my Lord. <laughs> oh that, no, <laughs> that's, that's a little bit scary. Um, what about well, what does that do? Okay, and you can see how easy it is to experiment now, how easy it is to play around with these different things. Pixelate, whoa. <laughs> how cool is that, okay? Now I have just randomly stumbled across this. There is so much creative application that you could do with this in order to um, make your Scratch project better. So. Look into clones if you are thinking of making more than one of the same sprite, use clones. It's so much better. And I look forward to seeing what you are able to create with it. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Scratch Mini Guide 12, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Sweet.